Hello, welcome to BBC News. A red weather warning has been issued by the Met Office for parts of England and Wales as Storm Eunice approaches, the second major storm to hit the UK in three days. A red is the highest level of weather alert. It's rarely issued and means there is a danger to life and property. The warning covers southwest England and South Wales. Winds of up to 90 miles an hour are forecast. Some transport services have already been cancelled. Power cuts are expected and people in in some areas are being advised to stay indoors. Meanwhile, the after effects of Storm Dudley, which struck parts of the UK yesterday and overnight, are still being felt. Heavy rain and strong winds brought down trees, railway cables and power lines. We'll have more on Storm Eunice shortly. First, this report from Simon Jones. Damaging wind and a warning that much more is on its way. This was the destruction of Dudley, bringing trees down in the Yorkshire Dales and blocking roads in Hertfordshire. It's been a week of wild weather. Investigations are underway into what caused this wind turbine to come down near Bridge End. And the advice is to keep away from the coast, not the time for a trip to the beach in County Down. Storm Dudley may now have swept through, but the consequences are still being felt. All trains in Scotland were cancelled yesterday evening and disruption has continued today. Services affected in many parts of the UK as network rail engineers were forced to check thousands of miles of track for debris and damage. At the Woodfield Animal Sanctuary in North Gower, this tree came down, narrowly missing the animals. Very, well, very shocked. Very shocked. I mean, the tree that's been uprooted, the diameter of the roots is about, from one, the diameter is about 15 15 feet across. Luckily, it didn't hit any animals, but anything in its way when it fell <laughs> would have been killed instantly. From the early hours of tomorrow, Eunice will blow in, which could be one of the worst storms for years. A severe weather warning has been upgraded to red, the highest level for parts of southwest England and South Wales, meaning there's a danger to life, with widespread power problems predicted. We're looking at potentially 100 mile an hour winds, so it is concerning not just from the, the energy side of things, but also we're hearing about the travel disruption and, and other services that are affected too. So we are making preparations for that. We're just out of Storm Dudley. We're aware of Storm Eunice coming along, but there, you know, the, certainly the, the weather forecast at the moment is looking quite challenging. The government's emergency COBRA committee has been meeting to discuss the threat, a sign of the seriousness of what's expected. Simon Jones. BBC News. Well, let's talk about what might happen in the next few hours. Our weather presenter, Chris Fawkes, is among those who is carefully monitoring Eunice as it comes in. And, and a red warning, as we say, they're not issued that often, Chris. No, they're very rare to issue red weather warnings. This is the Met Office top tier of warning. And as we've been reporting, it's enforced across parts of uh, Wales and southwest England as well. I'll show you the areas. It's uh, across this area. Now, it looks quite a narrow area, doesn't it? But mm. there'll be multiple hazards here. We're talking about the strongest gust of wind from this storm, around 70 to 90 miles an hour. That's going to be bringing widespread disruption. There'll be a large number of trees down and that kind of a thing. But the winds will also shove the ocean waters up the Severn Estuary, where combined with high tides and large waves, there could be some coastal flooding impacts. So that's one other concern we're worried about that area for. But the Met Office have also issued a much broader amber weather warning. Now, I don't want people to think, amber, well, that's less of a warning, we shouldn't pay attention. No, you should, because it's really unusual to get winds this strong across inland areas over such a wide area. Gusts 60 to 80 miles an hour, that's going to be bringing down a large number of trees during Friday across this zone. And I think around the Greater London area, we'll probably get gusts of wind into the 70s of miles an hour. Again, that's going to be very damaging. So we're going to get disruption on the rails, on the roads, probably at the airports as well, and the power lines may be brought down if those trees, of course, fall down on top of the power cables. Yes, uh, and in more rural areas, trees, obvious travel disruption as well as danger to life, of course. And in urban areas, uh, I mean, there's only so much you can tie down. I suppose that's worrying if you get very high winds in urban areas with construction sites, building, all that, all that sort of thing. Yeah, and there, there are some things that people can take and plan ahead they can actually take measures themselves it sounds stupid doesn't it but we often see flying trampolines in this kind of weather that then land on train tracks and cause all kinds of damage and problems people should be going out tonight 
and actually securing things like that in their gardens. Crane operators, I'm sure they'll have already dropped the cranes into a more stable position. That kind of thing can help as well. But it's not just the strong winds we're worried about. To the north of this system, which continues to develop and race in, you actually see it, that little bulge on the, the cloud. That's an emerging cloud head, we call it. And it's just on the tip of that, that's where the most powerful winds are in this storm. So it continues to develop. We can see it now. This only started to develop on Wednesday. Before that, it didn't exist, would you believe it? Yeah. Now, across the north, it's a different hazard. For the high hills of Northern Ireland, Scotland, Northern England, 10 to 30 centimetres of snow coming down quickly and heavily, blizzard conditions, snow plows and gritters are going to struggle to keep up with that accumulation of snow. So we'll probably see vehicles getting stranded. And if that weren't enough, because the temperatures are going to be quite close to freezing across the high ground, the snow will come down in big, chunky, sticky, wet flakes that will cling to power lines, could weigh them down, and again, you could get power cuts because of that as well. My goodness. Um, a quick thought, because we're focusing on tomorrow in, uh, for obvious reasons, but what about as we head into the weekend? Well, weekend, Eunice, this storm, will then be going across into Northern Europe, so they'll be getting some damaging gusts of wind. There are red alerts elsewhere. It's not just us. But the next system's going to come in quite quickly, and over the weekend, it's still going to stay very windy and blustery with gales, even some severe gales, rain and showers around as well. And even into next week, the Atlantic continues to flex its muscles, so it will stay very gusty and blowy. But hopefully we're not going to see those kind of scale of winds. We have to emphasise, Storm Eunice looks like a very dangerous system indeed. All right, Chris, thank you very much. Chris Fawkes. As we're inevitably focusing very much on Storm Eunice now... As as we look to something really, really significant affecting uh, the southwest of England and South Wales. Uh, very rarely do we get a red weather warning, as Chris Fawkes was just explaining to us. So let's head to St Ives in Cornwall. Our correspondent Jenny Kumar is there. Uh, what, what is happening where you are, Jenny? Um, what are people preparing for? Well, it's been a fairly calm day here today. We've spoken to uh, a number of businesses and fishermen as they make their preparations. Uh, we've heard that uh, dozens of schools have announced that they won't be opening tomorrow. Um, earlier today, we had that red warning of wind made by uh, the Met Office. That's expected to hit at around 7 uh, tomorrow in the morning. And that, combined with the high spring tide, is what's some weather experts are describing as a beast of a weather system. Um, the concern is that there is a risk of uh, debris, flying debris and um, power lines and trees coming down. Uh, they're also warning of severe uh, travel disruption. Uh, so the advice is to not travel, um, to make preparations, to check the Met Office website for uh, flood risk and to avoid coastal areas. Yeah, so it really is, um, I suppose, don't venture out unless you really, really have to. And that's one of the reasons schools are being shut, for example. Yes, that's right. It's, uh, there's big concern that there hasn't been, it's been predicted that there hasn't been a storm as severe as this one that's due to come since 2014. Um, and we haven't had a red warning like this uh, since uh, 2018. Um, so uh, they're predicting that they're, people should take preparations in case, you know, there is a um, severe impact of this storm. It's, they're expecting the north coast of Devon and Cornwall to be the, one of the most severely impacted areas in the country. Absolutely. All right, Jenny, take care. Thank you very much. Jenny Kumar there in St Ives in Cornwall. Uh, the advice, and Chris Sporks was echoing that, wasn't he, was to, to prepare as much as you can and uh, tie down things in your gardens. I mean, it's a really, really uh, stressful time for a lot of people. Perhaps worth reminding you that, well, Liz Bentley is a meteorologist and chief executive at the Royal Meteorological Society. And she explained that several factors are combining to make Eunice particularly dangerous. The, the strength of winds that we're likely to see across the southern half of the UK is very rare for us to see in Langus, as Chris said, of 70, 80 miles an hour across southern half of the UK. It's more common to get those kind of winds in winter storms across the northern half, but not across the southern half. I think the other thing to add is this storm is going to come through in daylight hours. So in the past, even across southern UK, when we've had some storms come through, sometimes they happen overnight when we're all safely tucked up in bed. But this will come through pretty much through daylight hours when people are 
trying to move about and, and hence, I guess, that more danger to life. And the final thing to say is that it's affecting, obviously, significantly populated areas of the UK. And so widespread disruption is is anticipated as we go through the course of tomorrow. You know, just trying to move around, whether that's on the roads or the rail network, even as Chris said, even just walking in that kind of wind is going to be challenging. So um, I think people just need to take warning that that uh, very rare red warning from the Met Office has been issued. Um, keep an eye on the forecast. As, as Chris also said, this is a, a rapidly developing uh, storm. We've only really seen it develop in the last 24 hours. So the timing, the position, the strength of those winds could be updated in the next few hours. Um, but yes, a very damaging and, and a rare event, I think, really across the southern half of the UK. Well, as we've been saying, Storm Eunice is bearing down on the UK and all indications are this is going to be a dangerous disruptive and damaging storm. In fact, a Met Office red warning is in force. That means there is a danger to life. The storm system has been developing. You can see it here on the earlier satellite picture, this hook of cloud indicative of a storm that's been deepening and strengthening rapidly. This area of low pressure passing across the UK and on its southern flank with all the isobars, the white line squeezing together, that is where we have the potential for damaging winds, especially across coastal parts of southwest England and South Wales. Met Office red warning here gusts of up to 90 miles per hour very rough seas and coastal flooding are likely and then we also have this much bigger amber warning area and still the potential for some really disruptive and dangerous weather here as well gusts of wind up to 80 miles per hour rain and wind quickly spreading northwards through the early part of friday snow for western counties of northern ireland high ground of northern england and up into Scotland as well. But the winds peaking through the morning across some coasts of Wales and the southwest with gusts up as high as 90 miles per hour. Some very rough seas, also very rough seas through the English Channel. And those strong winds will be working eastwards through the day, even inland spots of uh, eastern and southeastern England, seeing gusts of 70 to 80 miles per hour. That is very unusual. Further north, it won't be as windy, but snow is likely to cause issues. Some hill snow for parts of Northern Ireland and Northern England. Significant snow in Scotland could see up to 30 centimetres settling over high ground. That snow coming down very quickly. It is likely to cause transport impacts. It could cause some power cuts as well. Temperatures, the least of our worries, but really cold in the north where that snow is falling. Now, things will only very slowly calm down during Friday evening. We'll see some wintry showers pushing in from the northwest. And then for Saturday, well, a band of rain pushing in from the west, potentially with some snow, especially over high ground in the north. It will be a windy day, not as extremely windy as Friday, but still potentially windy enough to hamper any cleanup efforts. Temperatures between 3 and 10 degrees. And we stick with a fairly blustery theme as we head into Sunday. Some brisk winds across the UK, outbreaks of heavy rain, but mild, 9 to 13 degrees.